Hello, my name is Isabel Rodriguez, and today I will be talking about the analysis of viral and human oncogene expression in human papilloma-driven cancers. More than any other cancer, cervical cancer reflects striking global health inequity. HPV is responsible for almost all cervical cancer cases and is the fourth most common cancer worldwide. Incidence is highest and in low and middle income countries. Incidence of cervical cancer depends on population age, distribution of cancer risk factors, and socioeconomic status. Low and middle income countries that have reduced access to medical care screenings, clinics, and fundings are classified as low in the Human Development Index. Low Human Development Index has been shown to have higher cervical cancer incidence and mortality and account for nearly 90% of all cervical cancer deaths annually. Countries with low female education, weak economic status, and low contraceptive prevalence are negatively correlated with fertility rate. HPV has been recognized as a preventable disease since there is an HPV vaccine. As seen on the vaccination map on the left, not all countries have been vaccinated at the same rate. Continents like Africa and Asia, where HPV is high, have low vaccine rates. The World Health Organization initiated a plan to advance in the elimination of cervical cancer by 2030. HPV is most commonly sexually transmitted infection, and there are over 200 types of HPV, but only 15 are recognized as high risk and can cause cancer. According to the CDC in 2018, there are about 43 million HPV infections and among them mainly people in their teens or early 20s. In most cases, HPV goes away on its own within two years, but if the infection is not cleared, it can lead to cancer, usually seen with high risk HPVs. This means that HPV is the main cause of cervical cancer and can cause other cancers, including cancers of vulva, vagina, penis, anus, and head and neck cancers. Although there is no way to exactly know if HPV will develop into cancer or the exact mechanism and how this happens, many advances in HPV research has helped us formulate a hypothesis in where cell lines and various HPV types have been further explored to understand its mechanism and role in cancer progression. With the use of nanopore technologies, the obtaining of these reads, whether from cell lines or cervical tumors, have helped provide insight into the world of HPV and its DNA and RNA. HPV is a 7,900 base per circular DNA virus and replicates in the nucleus. It encodes the E6 and E7 oncoproteins, and E6 binds and inactivates the tumor suppressor P53, while E7 inhibits the cell cycle regulator PRB. In HPV-driven tumors, the virus is often integrated in the human genome. And although integration is not primarily a component of HPV's life cycle, as of right now, it seems to occur randomly. And if it does occur, it can lead to the formation of tumors and cancers. With the use of nanopore sequencing, we have successfully mapped HPV reads in both cell lines and tumors, allowing us for, to learn more in depth the variation in integration by HPV type. In doing this, we can help to further distinguish HPV types and improve the quality of care for individuals who are infected by specialized treatment for HPV type. Our panel of 22 different cell lines had different information on ancestry, HPV type, and cancer type. Looking at cell ancestry, we had 59% that were East Asian, 36% European, and 4% African American. There were eight different HPV types with HPV 16 seen in half of them. In the collection, there are four different cervical cancer types with cervical squamous cell carcinoma being present in over 50% of our cell lines. The methods used were either for tumor or direct cell lines, we obtained the DNA or the RNA, and then used that on the grid ion to get direct RNA long read sequencing. Different methods were also used. They were whole genome sequencing, ultra high molecular weight sequencing, adaptive sampling, cDNA transcriptome, and direct RNA sequencing. These reads were then read on IgB to further look into each cell line and HPV type and possible integration. Whole genome sequencing, we were able to determine the HPV type and look for common integration sites across all chromosomes. We were then able to label these spots where each of our cell lines seem to integrate. As seen, the virus integrates all over the human genome and each cell line has its own unique integration site. Furthermore, we explored in each cell line the site of integration and focus on genes around it in order to get an idea of what these integrations do in these specific cell lines. We noticed that some cell lines, HPV integrates near genes and can turn on or off that gene. Sometimes HPV will integrate into a gene and inactivate it, which is known as insertional inactivation. As seen in SNU 1005 with the RAD51B DNA repair gene that becomes inactivated. Shown in red are the genes that are activated or who have high expression and are near the integration sites. 
Some examples seen were in SEC-152 with the FOXY1 gene, which is a transcription factor that was highly expressed, and the SNU-778 with the RAB18, which is part of the RAS oncogene family, which is overexpressed. We analyzed the expressions of these genes near the integration site in all of our cell lines, and we saw that for nearly each cell line, there is at least one gene that was highly expressed. The bold boxes indicate genes found at the integration site, while the dark green boxes are the genes of high expression in that cell line. It was clear that each cell line, if containing HPV, has at least one gene of oncogenic importance that is highly expressed around the integration site. We found specific oncogenes that were overexpressed that were not at integration sites. By examining the whole genome sequence, we found gene amplifications of the EGF receptor in cell line MS-71, 751, and YAP1 in SNU-1000 and SEC-154, overall giving us a better picture of these HPV cell lines. With full reads, we were able to see integration sites and which sites are amplified in gene expression, giving us a comprehensive picture for each individual cell line. Now, going back to HPV itself, we noticed an interesting case where we had one cell line which did not contain any HPV reads, which was C33A. Having no HPV was supported by all of our long read sequencings, and not having HPV would mean that there would be no E6 or E7 to inhibit the tumor suppressor genes of TP53 and RB1, but they were still seen inhibited due to mutations. Mutations were seen in the TP53 with an amino acid change and an RB1 with a splice site mutation, where the G, which is essential for splicing, was changed to an A, therefore causing the splice site to be missed and deleting part of the protein. We then looked at another unique case, which was HT3, which was a cell line with a rare HPV type, HPV30, which is not common or known to be a high-risk HPV. We performed whole genome and transcriptome sequence and found HPV30 integrated in chromosome 13 near the RB1 region. RB1 and TP53 mutations in these cell lines were also seen, with both being amino acid changes with TB53 being homozygous, while RB1 was heterozygous. Here, we constructed a comprehensive table of all of our cell lines with their RB1 and TP53 mutations, if any. It can be seen that C33A has a mutation on both genes, one being a splice site mutation, the leading part of the protein, and the other an amino acid change. HT3 has both an amino acid change caused, causing the mutation in both genes, and none of the high-risk HPV-containing cell lines had a mutation in RB1. We did observe, however, a heterozygous mutation, which was an intrinsic variant of unknown significant in the TB53 gene in cell line SCC090. And in the HUH7, which was one of the two liver tumors that we used in comparison, a mutation in the TB53 region was seen as well. In conclusion, we established what we believe to be the largest collection of cervical cell lines, and using long read DNA and RNA sequencing, we characterized the HPV types, integration sites, and gene expression. This helps us further explore these cell lines and learn more about the impact of HPV integration. We are currently testing targeted therapeutic agents in activated immune cells, and we have isolated RNA and DNA from cervical precancers and cancers FFP tissue and plan to run a cervical panel on them using nanostrain. We hope that with this research, we are able to change the approach to HPV treatment and allow it for become H specific by HPV type. Thank you all for your time, and I'd like to thank everybody in my lab who worked on this project, and along with all of our collaborators.